Hello students. So this is our question. Apply Gauss law to derive the expression for electric field intensity due to an infinitely long straight and uniformly charged wire. And what if the you know wire is wire is positively charged? Then what is the direction of the field intensity? So that has to be determined. And uh, this question was asked in 2018. ACS final or some higher secondary education council right so let's start let me take a new slide to write the answer okay here is the new slide so let us consider a straight wire this is a straight wire which is uniformly charged and the nature of the charge is suppose positive so this is uniformly charged positively charged infinitely long wire okay so this is infinitely long wire let me assume that way okay so suppose we need to find the electric field at this point due to this uh, infinitely long charged wire at this point p okay so now here you see so in order to find the electric field at this point we have to assume a gaussian surface so that uh, must be cylindrical here in this case so let me consider this uh, this is the gaussian surface so just wait that must be passing through the point p right so this is the gaussian surface cylindrical gaussian surface and let me take the radius of this uh, cylinder, uh, this Gaussian surface, suppose R. Okay. So here you see. First, let me write what I have considered. The sweet. So let us derive an expression for electric field intensity at point P due to a uh, straight. So let me write here to uh, due to a straight uh, uniformly uh, infinitely long uniformly uh, charged which is positively charged uniformly positively charged wire and let us take uh, lambda as a linear charge density and r is the distance from the wire to the point p where we need to find the electric field intensity and let us assume an imaginary uh, cylindrical surface which is drawn through the point P of radius R and length L around the wire. Okay, so let me just uh, write here. There should be a due to. Should be due to right, due to a straight, uniformly long, uh, long, and in, uh, straight infinitely long, uniformly charged, uh, positively charged. We have considered positively charged okay so we have taken the length of this uh, you know length of this cylinder is suppose l we have taken that way right therefore <coughs> what going to be the charge enclosed by this uh, cylindrical surface right charged enclosed by the cylindrical surface right by the cylindrical surface by the cylindrical surface is that's going to be q equal to now here you see uh, the linear charge density is lambda that means in per unit length the charge per unit length is lambda so here the length of this uh, surface this cylinder is l so total charge will be lambda into l right lambda into m lambda into l okay so now let me copy this last step and uh, let me copy the diagram as well and let me take a new slide here just wait so hope uh, you have taken the screenshot of this take the screenshot so this is the diagram here you can see. So 
So now what we can do here? We can apply God's law. So by God's law, so let me write this one. Just to wait. By God's law. So we know electric flux through the cylinder. Electric flux through the cylinder. Electric flux through the cylinder. will be given by phi is equal to 1 by epsilon not times of uh, you know total charge enclosed by the cylinder right that is q by epsilon not where q is nothing but uh, we have already taken that q is nothing but uh, you know lambda l okay this is lambda l by epsilon not this is suppose equation number one let me take this is as equation number one okay now here you see here we have three surfaces let me take three surface this is top surface is surface number one and uh, curved surface is suppose surface number two and the bottom surface is suppose surface number three let me take that way okay now you see if you uh, take here very small element of area so that is suppose ds and uh, and the uh, area vector is along this direction ds vector this is the area vector and similarly at the top surface also if you have if uh, if we take uh, you know uh, a very small area element ds then the uh, then the area vector should be in this direction ds vector because it must be perpendicular to the surface now here we are considering positively charged and uh, electric field direction of electric field uh, due to this charge must be radially outward so this must be in this direction right so the electric field should be in this direction so similarly here at the bottom also if you take the very small uh, surface element then that area element uh, area vector will be in this direction directed in this direction and again which is also perpendicular to the uh, direction of the electric field due to this positive charge right so so hope you have understood these things so now you see so now let us take uh, ds be the area vector of a very small area element ds now you see so we have a very small area element ds right so this its area vector is this ds area vector and we have an electric field here e then flux through this area element will be given by e dot e dot ds vector right and now to in order to find the flux through the entire surface we have to integrate it okay so we're gonna obtain by you know using surface integration right that gonna give you the uh, total flux through uh, surface right so now you see as we have divided this uh, surface Gaussian surface into three parts that is top one is surface number one and the carb one is surface number two and the bottom one is surface number three right so what we can do here so we can split this as integration over the first surface e dot ds similarly surface integral over the second surface e dot ds and just wait uh, let me have some space here just wait Wait a second. Okay. One more time. Just do it. So now, and we can write surface integral over the third surface, that is bottom surface, e dot ds. Right. 
So that's what we're gonna have, right? So you see, um, in in the uh, you know for the first and third surface for the first and third surface, right? That means top and bottom surface. For the top and bottom, you can see the angle between the electric field and the area vector is 90 here also direction of electric field is at right angle to the direction of the area vector only here at p you can see the uh, angle between the electric field and ds the area vector uh, is uh, zero right so for first and third surface angle between so let me use another here angle between electric field E and area vector is 90 and uh, cos 90 degree is 0 so therefore what we can have that surface integral over the first and the third surface E dot T S and both equals to 0 right both equals to zero so e dot ds means e what does it mean e dot ds means just uh, let me write here properly so e dot ds it is nothing but you know <coughs> uh, just wait let me show you one more thing let me write this one so e dot ds means e dot ds is equal to e into ds cos theta right so here cos 90 is 0 so that's why e, e dot e dot ds is gonna be 0 so this two becomes 0 so therefore and uh, n one more thing and four the surface uh, for the surface number two the angle between the angle between the area vector and the electric field is theta is equal to zero degree so and cos zero cos zero sorry cos zero degree is one so here in this case e dot ds is equal to e ds cos theta cos 0 degree that's going to be equal to e ds e ds so that's why we're going to have from the above relation so for the first and the third surface these two going to be zero and we're going to have this one only right so just wait therefore from the above relation we're going to have phi is equal to surface integral over the second surface only e dot ds e dot ds and here you see e dot ds is nothing but e ds so we can write this is equal to integration e ds let me take a new slide let me copy this step so let me take a new slide let me so what we have got we have got this right so as we have got that e dot e dot ds is equal to e ds cos zero degree which is equal to e ds for for what for the surface number two right so that's why it can be equal to integration over the second surface curved surface e ds that's what we're gonna have so now you see and uh, e is constant so it can be taken outside the integral and the integration draw that diagram again so let me copy this diagram so just wait so 
So here is the diagram. This is the diagram. This is uh, this is surface number one, and the curved surface is surface number two, and the uh, bottom surface is surface number three. That's what we have taken. And area of the curved surface, the curved surface of the cylinder, that's going to be equal to, you know, integration of ds, sorry, ds. That's going to be equal to curved surface, curved area of the cylinder, of the cylinder. So that's going to be equal to nothing but. 2 pi r into l right 2 pi r into l so that's why we have got phi is equal to e dot sorry e into 2 pi r l and uh, from equation number one so let me go back to the previous slide here you see uh, from this equation we have got phi is equal to just wait let me copy this from equation number one we have got that phi is equal to this so let me write here you don't have to repeat this uh, equation number one just i have written because it is in the previous slide so this phi is equal to this right from equation number one so instead of phi we can write we can write what we can write we can write lambda by uh, sorry lambda into l by epsilon naught is equal to e 2 pi r into l so just mention here for, uh, from one or using one using equation number one that's what you need to mention okay so now let me cut this uh, equation number one because it is already written in the previous slide okay so we don't need to read, uh, write it again so now here you see so from this what we can do we can cancel l l right so let's find the electric field only electric field that's going to be equal to <coughs> lambda by 2 pi epsilon sorry lambda pi r in lambda by 2 pi r epsilon naught so this is the electric field right this is the electric field uh, right this is the electric field okay uh, due to the we can say this electric field due to the infinitely long wire this is the required expression okay this is the this is the required expression okay now you see if you consider this uh, you know unit vector of this area vector unit vector of this area vector uh, ds is suppose n cap and the direction of the electric field is in this direction that's why in vector form you can write in vector form you can write this expression in this way into n cap so where n cap is the unit vector unit vector along the radius you can consider along the radius unit vector along the along the radius and uh, you can say perpendicular to the perpendicular to the curved surface curved surface at P okay which gives the direction of electric field which gives the direction of electric field E right so hope you have understood this. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.